Welcome back. His dream was to be part of a top orchestra, not only recognized in the U.S., but also around the world. And guess what, folks? That dream has come true for our next guest, and we are so lucky that he now calls Houston home. He's originally from Santiago, Chile, and he auditioned 33 times to get into the Houston Symphony. I'd like to welcome Leonardo Soto, the first native Hispanic timpanist to play in a major orchestra in the U.S. Welcome to the show, Leo. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so we have got to talk about this. 33 auditions with the Houston Symphony. I mean, I would think after one, I'd be like, okay, well, I'm done, thanks, <laughs> bye. But you, I mean, how did you keep going back? How did you just be able to pick yourself up to do it all over again? Well, the 33 auditions were around the country. Uh, and I remember when I was in college, uh, however long ago that was, uh, talking to my teacher and he said, first of all, remember you have to have the stomach to do this because there's going to be a lot of no's, very few yeses. So it's not, it wasn't easy. I mean, I remember coming back from a few auditions and just like throwing my sticks away, throwing my music away and say, I'm done. Uh, but after a day or two, I'd be like, no, I need my sticks back. <laughs> and I, I had to pick it up and, uh, and just, you know, it's just one of those things where if you have a goal in your, in your, uh, in your heart mostly and you just have to keep fighting for it well that is so well said keep fighting for it and your musical education leo started at the age of seven when you were enrolled into this uh musical conservatory i guess you would call it but i understand learning the the music education component was actually something that you really hated as a child <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know a seven year old kid in south america wants to play soccer it's just the way it is and that's where all my friends were doing. But I was very lucky that my father is a drummer. He is a self-taught drummer. And um, because he was self-taught, he wanted me to have the education. So part of the whole process was, if you want to play drums, then you have to have the knowledge and, and be a well-rounded musician. So therefore he took me to the conservatory where, you know, the drums were pretty much the last thing I did because I had to learn music theory. You know, I had to learn not only all the notes, but how they apply to other instruments and what they, the world of music is in general. And, um, and you know, while my friends were outside playing soccer. So yeah, it, it was not easy. At some point I do remember uh, stopping for about a year. Um, I just wanted to play soccer really. And then I missed it and I asked to go back to it and then I never stopped ever since then. You said something early on in the interview that if you know you have a goal uh, in your heart, and I think that's what separates uh, you know people who are achievers, right? Because maybe just dreamers carry on to the next goal, um, and I think that's what's so great about your story. W what's interesting is if you weren't a musician, what do you think you would be? Maybe uh, b besides a professional soccer player, I mean, maybe I, would you be in the kitchen? What would you be doing? You know, you know I, I don't. I don't think I was good enough to be a professional <laughs> player. I don't think. Um, I actually, I don't know the answer to that question. It's a great question because um, uh, I don't. I, I can't imagine myself doing something else. If if something happens to me where I couldn't perform anymore, I will have to be somehow involved in in the music in the music business in, in a way in, in whatever shape or form because it's just you know it's one of those things that I, I can't step away from it. I did, I did do a lot of, um, as, a, as a younger kid, because my mom is an actress, I did a little bit of acting and I loved it, actually. I loved, uh, especially comedy stuff. Um, I did a lot of that as a kid. So maybe I would have veered in that direction a little bit, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'll just stick with music. Leo, uh, if you start doing TV and film, Courtney and I will go see all the movies. Every single well, one. Every single one. <laughs> we'll be your best fans. Hey, so I know that your passion for soccer, you were talking about feeling frustrated as a young person when your friends were all uh, on, the, on the field, the football field, right? As it, it really should be called football, right? Because you kick it with your feet. So anyway, even though now you are not playing soccer, your job seems very athletic because just watching you perform, you know, you can both like hear yes. you perform and watch you perform. It is a very physical activity. So it, it, it's sort of like you're, you've become conditioned to this sort of daily workout. How many hours during the day are you actually uh, playing? So uh, at home, I spend a lot of time with this, with this little guy, this practice bud. I just pretty much sit in front of, if I'm watching a movie or, or a soccer game, uh, I have my sticks in my practice bud and I'm constantly moving my hands. Um, behind the instrument, um, 
Right now, I'm actually preparing for a, for a piece that I'm going to be playing with the orchestra in November, and the piece is written for eight drums. So there is literally a cage of drums around me, and just to get around all the instruments, there's a lot of uh, physicality to it. So in that sense, I try to stay active, um, you know, like at least exercise uh, five times a week and try to keep, you know, um, in good shape physically and also to prevent injuries, like uh, stretching and stuff like that are super important um, just to stay physically in good shape. That is so interesting. I mean, and one would never think a musician would have to like stretch and condition their body. It's fascinating. Right. I know. And I have to ask you, the video that we were looking at, is that your home, Leo? It is. Okay, so what do your neighbors think? Are they up for a concert every night? I mean, that's 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 fantastic. You know, it's, I don't know what they think of me. <laughs> no complaints, so they love it. <laughs> I, did, I did make sure that when the pandemic started, I did not, luckily on that side of the apartment, there is there's just a staircase, so there's no neighbors that way. This side, there is neighbors, and I live downtown, but um, I knocked on the door and I, and I asked them if they can hear me, and they were like, no. I was like, okay, good. So I'll, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Obviously, you know, it's not like full on volume practicing in my, in my apartment. Right. Uh, but, and also I try and do it during the day, like doing normal hours. So, you know, I try to be conscientious in that way. I think it's so great. And for, for anybody who has maybe children who play in their school orchestra or have desires of uh, going to the Carnegie Mellon University as, as like you did, um, advice to these young musicians out there. I mean, you know, the amount of auditions and the amount of no's that you've heard in your lifetime. Um, some advice for these younger musicians. So, um, first of all, I had to thank my my uh, my father for being uh, so insistent about me putting the work on because, like I said before, as a kid, it's hard. But if you don't impose it, if you just uh, remind them that it's important, it's like learning other languages, like learning uh, to play tennis or something different, it's important for a well-rounded people to know music, even if you don't actually pursue it. But if you find that you actually fell in love with it, um, you just have to stick with it and. Um, Believe in yourself. It's a tricky business, um, but if, especially if you're not from from. In my case, like I'm not. I didn't grow up in this country. It's it was a uh, an, an extra incentive. Like you know, you could you could feel down about it. You know, I felt behind when I first came to the country. I felt very far behind from my from my classmates at, at Carnegie Mellon because they have been you know in really really good teachers for a long time. So um, in my case, it was just a matter of how bad I want it and how much I'm gonna work for it. And I think it just comes uh, a personal decision. It comes, it becomes a uh, life pursuit. And it's one of the most beautiful things you can do because to this day, I don't, I don't call what I do a, a job at all. Like I, I, don't, I don't have to work. I just do what I love for a living. And I don't think it gets any better than that. Yeah, that is incredible. Leonardo Soto, thank you so much. Clearly all that hard work paid off and we hope to see you and hear you perform in person very soon. Thanks, Thank Leo. You Thank you. And to learn more about Leo's musical journey, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv.